What's up travelers? In this video we're going to this place, the Pantheon. Check it out. self-promotion and we're good at stealing. It's a serious. Barbarini, but the barbarians didn't do or steal, the Barbarini family did. Now according to the two plaques, it says that Urban VIII renovated the Pantheon for a jubilee, which he did. Not a lie, but he also stole all of the remaining bronze from this building. Right above us would have been a beautiful golden bronze ceiling. And on Rome's birthday, the light comes out of the Pantheon, will reflect off of that ceiling and a sort of golden light. So when Caesar would come out and present himself to the people of Rome, he'd be lit up like a golden god, or in our, in our case, Beyonce. All right? All right, let's go inside. Now when we go inside, you're not gonna be like this guy, the zombies in the front. things that are original in this in this building the structure is original right the structure itself is original the floor is original the dome is original but everything else that we're going to walk around these are all christian modifications uh they could be coming from uh the late medieval it is it's right in front of us in a high altar trigger that's madonna with child that is actually almost byzantinian it was given it was gifted to this temple uh basically when it was turned converted from a temple to a church so the painting, we've got a painting that's still in the painting, and it's converted to a church in its history, 609 AD. Uh, it was gifted to uh, Pope when it fought to the court by the Byzantine Emperor Focus, and that's what saved this building from destruction. He also gave me a little penny as well. All right, any questions before we go over? All right, that's what. Well. It's not the best as far as art. And then, of course, you have some scenes from, from, uh, from, uh, from Christ's birth in his childhood. For example, right over here to our left, and it's called the Dream of Joseph. The Dream of Joseph represents when God sent his angel down to let Joseph know that he is the true father of Christ. You know, that's one of the things I learned later on. I thought that Joseph always, always knew. He did in a way. He did his brother more faithful versus actual. So everything he did, he did on faith. Right? It wasn't until the angels came and told him that he was the, that God was the true father of Christ, which to me is a very interesting uh, story because you know, we live in a sort of Christian dominated society. Even if you're not Christian, you know about the birth of Christ. You can still buy some new wife. And to me, it's an angel. Surprise, surprise. I'm already pregnant. I would probably have a few questions. <laughs> if he said it was God's baby, I would have even more questions. And then if he said, hey, we're going to have to go on a run for our lives for the foreseeable future, I might not make it. Joseph, he was like, road trip, you know, so I always, I always feel as though he should get a little bit more 
uh, recognition for that. And I love the way the artist gives Joseph almost a so serene, like almost like he's like, like a weight has been lifted. And which is even cheekier is in the background, if you notice the very demure looking Mary, almost as if she's saying, I told you so. Now this one here to our right is called the rest from the uh, rest from Egypt. So the story goes, Joseph and Mary first have to run to Bethlehem. Uh, Christ is born. They didn't have to escape Bethlehem in Judea and make their way to Egypt. They didn't have to escape Egypt and then make their way back to Nazareth. This is between Egypt and Nazareth. This also shows you the age difference between Joseph and Mary. You know, Mary is like a young teenager and Joseph is like an older, bolder man who's still trying to grow his ponytail. I say, once you lose the top, you gotta keep it neat. <laughs> now, uh, we want to go from one to the That we're around, we don't really have any um, works by the great masters. Uh, you don't have like the great pieces of art, but what you do have here, we have important people, especially for Italy. Here we have the tomb of Italy's second king. Like I said before, Italy is a very young nation. It started off as a kingdom, now it's a republic. You really had only three kings, and two of them are buried here. This is the tomb of Umberto the first, the second king of Italy. Now here's a funny thing: although he's the second king, his name is Umberto. Now, unlike his father, though, and Virtual First is in tune with his wife, the reason being, she was more popular in life than he was. I can also say that with her, that she was more important to a time. During this time, uh, a lot of the uh, majority of the Indian population were were cousin class, uh, uneducated, so forth. And they also were But one thing they did, they did have this sort of love of this young princess Rita, seeing her through her whole life. She was like a young princess guy at the time, so they used her name recognition to sort of blow Italy uh, with the pizza. If you notice, basil is green, mozzarella is white, and tomato sauce is red. These are also the colors of this new flag of this new nation. So, lesson, when you eat a margarita pizza, no, you're just not eating. You're also eating a nation and a dead queen. Yeah, all right, let's go to this one. First thing you'll see on the sarcophagus, it says bones and ashes, because that's basically where they found bones, ashes, in his ring, which they identified him as the great Raphael. All right, now, you have but the thing that is, it doesn't look like that. But this stuff right here, right? I thought it was something you just took a little piece of it over to the tire. This is some Egyptian It is so rare because it's so valuable. And I took it at Roman's place, he stole all of it. On the front, only people that have it is the church, a big ball of it. They really want to break out some of it when the king dies. And they didn't break it out.
That's a light. This is a light for passing out of here. It just starts to light up. Thousand years ago, like the smoke and the camera, you see like, like clouds in the dome, like it disappears. Looks like you're looking to the, like the sky. Two thousand years ago. Like I said, the first king of Italy. If you go by uh, the Colosseum, Piazza Venezia, that giant white marble building that's dedicated to him, right? Yes, it's dedicated to him. You see him on a statue on a horse right in front. He's a gigantic one. Like he's about this tall. All right. He did not speak Italian. Even in death, the hundred years after death, death, if you notice the reef that's in the front, and right there looks almost like the Danish flag. It's actually the flag of the Savoy family, the flag of the nation. So even a hundred years after his death, he still prefers to refer to the King of Piedmont and the King of Italy. Yeah, that's uh, that's Victoria Now, uh, for the people who are here in the very beginning. And I showed you the flood that hit the uh, city of the That's the damage right here. I like how the artist shows him, Thomas trying to poke in his wounds, but Christ is holding him back on the Stop. So that's one of my favorite paintings, although it's not one of the important paintings, but it's one of my favorite paintings. 